process while I was working there, my dad was diagnosed with, with cancer and unfortunately he died in the same hospital where I was working, that is 2012. So back in my mind I was like, hmm, uh, you, you talk about coincidences, but I believe anything that happens in life, it has a purpose. Because uh, I was able to take care of my dad. Hello, hello, how are you doing my people? Welcome back to Inspired Generation Show. This is a place where we seek to inspire people, educate, motivate, encourage, and of course we want to become one big family where we can support each other to become better people in the societies and in the communities where we come from. And thank you so much for the support. So today we are back with another show and I'm so excited because it's somebody that I know, somebody that we've been I've known for the last three years since I came to this country and it's someone that I respect so much. And uh, I believe our story is going to be an inspiration to so many people, either to those people who want to come to this place from Kenya or whichever the place that you might be watching this video from, and even to those people already in this place, and more especially to the international students, because her journey is, uh, is so amazing and uh, I believe that she's going to inspire people. So I don't want to talk a lot of things, I want to invite us so that she can introduce herself and then we can continue with the conversation. So you'll make me smile, I love that one. Dorcas was born in Meru, Nari, and uh, I grew up in Nari. I went to Ronkuro Primary School and finished in Kerua SDA Primary, that's why I did my KCP in 1999. And then I went to Karura SDA uh, Secondary School, mm -hmm. where I, f I did my ACSE in 2003. Mm -hmm. Because uh, when I was a child, I was always dreaming of being a nurse, helping people. Mm -hmm. And then I also dreamed of being a businesswoman. So I had two options. It's either I go do the nursing mm -hmm. or... Do, uh, do a business. So after my um, after my high school, uh, I enrolled into Baraton University, East, uh, the, the University of East Africa Baraton mm -hmm. in Eldoret, and I went to do my bachelor's in nursing. Um, for the program was supposed to be for four years, but it, I ended up taking like six years. My journey, my growing up, and all that has been a great journey, and I thank God. I was born in a Christian home. I was raised, uh, if you can see, I went to a Christian primary school, high school, and the college. Mm -hmm. So my journey has been in the Christian, and I love that. Um, but on the other side, uh, I thank my parents so much because my inspirer was my dad. My father was always my motivational, and he always told me, my daughter, you'll be a doctor one day. I want you to study and learn and be a doctor. Mm -hmm. So, at the back of my mind, I thought doctors will always be medical doctors, as most of us know. Mm -hmm. But as I grew up, I knew you can also be a doctor in history. So, mm -hmm. uh, I decided, well, I'll be a doctor, not in the medicine, but uh, I'll be a nurse doctor or maybe whatever doctor I'll be, but I know I will. I always knew, uh, especially in, in, in school, I was, I can say I was always the best, a best student, top of my class, because I knew the journey is always, you, ha you have to be successful, you have to be the top, and I, I was basically a book warmer. That's most people, my classmates always called me a book warmer, because if you don't find me reading, I don't know where you find me. I never used to play or that so because I knew I wanted to succeed in education and as you are told, uh, if you succeed in education, you succeed in life of which nowadays it's not necessarily bad. <laughs> yeah. So I went to Baraton. Life started becoming challenging because when I was growing up, my, my dad was a businessman and he had a little bit of and now because I was a firstborn and uh, my two young brothers were now going to high school uh, and 
Baraton being like a private university, it was expensive. Mm -hmm. So we went ahead, we tried the first two years. I started it well, but because of finances, it started becoming hard. So I was like, ah, I have to achieve. It doesn't matter. I've always had this mantra in me. Once I start something, no matter what, I'll do it. So um, I started working in school at Baraton. They had these jobs because it's, it has like connections with the Andrews. So they had this work program whereby you work at school and then the money you get, you don't get paid cash. Yeah. They send it to the school, I mean to the school, school fees. fees. So I was working like, I became a, I was cleaning in the evening. Mm -hmm. I could clean classes and the auditorium. That is in the evening after, after, after classes and all that, around nine, between nine and 11, mm -hmm. I would do that cleaning work. And then, because we had to go uh, Vespers every day to church, there is that work whereby uh, it was a must for every student to go to church. So we had a roll call. You are assigned a chair, you sit on that chair for the whole semester. So if you don't sit on that chair, if that chair is empty, mm -hmm. you are marked absent. Wow. So me, I was one of those people who were employed to go to church and mark the chairs. So if your chair was empty, then you're absent. At the end of the semester, those absences are counted. Mm -hmm. And then the next semester, you won't get time to go out. So anyway, it was a way of making people to go to church. So such jobs, mm -hmm. I, would, I, I did that and helped me pay the school fees. But because we are not being paid much, mm -hmm. like you'd be paid 21 Kenyan shillings per hour, mm -hmm. that's very real money uh, so you end up working for a long time mm -hmm. and then yeah so uh instead of me completing school in the in the four years mm -hmm. it took me like six years but i thank god because my family supported me and i got married before i had finished but that didn't end up because at least the family for my husband they also helped support mm -hmm. so i thank them for that so I finished my degree in, I graduated in 2010. Mm -hmm. and we are told to go to school, study, then come get a good job. In Kenya, I, I know most of you know that mm -hmm. that is not the case. You go study, get your degrees, and then now you start facing the other side of the life. Mm -hmm. When you go present your papers, people, eh, no. How much do you want us to pay? Especially in nursing, if you are, you've done, the degree yes. it gets so hard to get a job, to get a job in Kenya because they in that field. yeah uh, and like yeah. how much do we pay you yeah. and then they because most of the nurses by then were KMTC they had KMTC, taken a yeah. diploma mm -hmm. and uh, some had done the certificate mm -hmm. but although it was in the verge of facing it out mm -hmm. still there are those certificates but who were who are upgraded. So you go in a hospital, you present your CV and they're like, man, we don't have money to pay a uh, degree nurses. You people want to come to be uh, nurse matrons and leaders, we can't pay you. And then you're like, no, just give me whatever you give me. So I stayed out, uh, I turned up for like uh, four months, yes, without a job. Uh, and then... Luckily enough, that year, that was 2010, the government has introduced an internship system whereby the BSNs, when you graduate, you go for an internship for a whole year. Mm -hmm. Then after that, you get your license. So the government placed us in hospitals. Mm -hmm. So I was placed in Pika, level five. Uh, you know Kenyan style, when the government will place you somewhere, they will say, okay, you will be paid. But before you get paid, it's like six months down the line. So it was really challenging, but uh, by God's grace, we maneuvered. Then after the internship, that was in 20, I finished my internship in, at the end of 2011. The government had promised we might absorb you or not, but they didn't. So now after that, 
you go back to Tamaki. So uh, I started looking for jobs. I looked, but I couldn't get any. And uh, I remember when I was growing up, I told myself, when I finish school, I'll have to serve my home community. Yeah. So what I did, I went back home. I mean, I got a job at Cairo Mission Hospital, St. Teresa's. I went there, they were like, oh, how much? They never employed a, 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 a BSN. So when, when I went there, I told them, seriously, I don't want that big money. Come here to serve. I had promised myself I'll serve my home yeah. community. I'm comfortable with the whatever money you give me. I don't mind. I just want to give my service. So that even whenever I go somewhere, I'll not be guilty that I didn't serve my community. They went ahead and employed me. Uh, it was really very little money. But I took it because at the end of the day, it was the service to my community, not about me being paid. So I worked with them for one year and almost six months. Uh, that was 2011, 2012. And in the process, while I was working there, my dad was diagnosed with, with cancer. And unfortunately, he died in the same hospital where I was working. That is 2012. So back in my mind, I was like, hmm. Uh, you, you talk about coincidences, but I believe anything that happens in life, it has a purpose. Because uh, I was able to take care of my dad in that process. And I saw him the last, until the last days of his life. So if I was far away, I'm like, maybe I never have had the privilege. So I always take that like God has earned a plan. So after that, so that was in... He died in uh, March, and then down the line in October, my contract ended with the, with the hospital. So I was like, uh, they told me, now, you know what, I think we might not be able to keep on uh, paying you because of this and that. So I told them, oh, that's fine. I'm happy for the time I've sat. So I was like, now I need to go looking. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, that now threw me out again. I have to go back and start looking for a job. So I was like, now what do I do? I had already had my first born and I was in the process of uh, having my second born. Mm -hmm. So I went to Nakuru. There are friends in Nakuru. They said, oh, can you help? Oh, I went there and uh, I didn't get a job, mm -hmm. but I got some locums. There was a clinic, uh, family health options. Mm -hmm. They were giving me locums. Not every day, but they could call me, hey, Dorcas, maybe you can today or tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So I would go do my locums here and there mm -hmm. and get there. By then, locums, you do, you're getting like uh, 800 per, per shift. So it wasn't bad. So at the same, while I was in there, mm -hmm. I got another locum with Nairobi uh, mm -hmm. Women. Mm -hmm. So I ended up Starting, I started working two jobs. Wow. wow. Okay. <laughs> I would work during the day in uh, FHOK, the family health options, mm -hmm. from 7 to 5. Mm -hmm. Then I would, uh, I was living around. I would walk home, go take a shower, eat dinner, and then by 6 30, I was at uh, Nairobi Women's. And I did that for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. Like 7, 8 months, yes. Mm -hmm. I so in Kenya, I was working in two jobs, and I thank God because it, it was like a preparation. I didn't know, but you know, you're like, ah, life is so hard. Yeah. You never know what happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that finished, and uh, I kept on applying, and then I got a job with the International Rescue Committee. Mm -hmm. It was in Somalia, and that, mm -hmm. uh, that one was, a, it was good. It was a, better, a little bit pain, mm -hmm. well, because... Uh, because it was an NGO and it's an international one. You're going there for three months away from your family because mm -hmm. you couldn't go with the family mm -hmm. in the campsite. Mm -hmm. So we would fly there, go work for three months, mm -hmm. and then they were giving you one week to go home. To go home. Mm -hmm. So uh, by that time, my kids were still young. So I started leaving my kids. Mm -hmm. I go three months, 
then you come back one one week. So it's like now that separation. Yeah. I worked there for one one year, like six months. Mm -hmm. That was up to December twenty fifteen. Mm -hmm. No, in twenty thirteen I had applied for school. Mm -hmm. I started. I was like, oh, I need to apply for masters. I mm -hmm. need to go study. So I, I applied in Australia, I applied in um, England for scholarships and all that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, one, of, one of my in-law told me, can you apply in the US? I said, okay, I applied. Mm -hmm. I went to the embassy, but they denied me visa. That was 2013, mm -hmm. August. So, but I was happy because by then, my son was very little. Yeah. So I was like, ah. That's fine. So I I forgot about it. Mm -hmm. Then in 2015, mm -hmm. they're like, ah, you can try. I'm like, ah, they already did I hear this. Why should I? Should she said, like, no, mm -hmm. keep on. Well, I applied. Mm -hmm. And uh, in December, when I was going, I was like, these people, mm -hmm. they don't give easily. So let me just go. Yeah. When I went, I was given the visa. Now it was like shock on me. Mm -hmm. Really, <laughs> what am I going to do? Mm. <laughs> because I was not prepared psychologically. Yeah. I was not ready because the first time I was, but I'm like, ah, oh, how do I do that? Mm -hmm. So I had two weeks to prepare uh, to report to school. Mm. I had not even informed my employer because it's something you know yeah. you're not sure whether you get it or anything. Mm -hmm. So I didn't even go back to the camp. Mm -hmm. I just wrote my, my resignation letter, I told them I, I've just received uh, my visa, I have to report to school on this, so there's no way. Yeah. Then now, the other part was very psychological because I had two boys, one was five years and the other one it, it was it just like turned three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was really very traumatizing to me, mm -hmm. but I was like, no girl, you have to. You have to do whatever you have to. So I prepared and came. I remember I landed in in uh, Dallas mm -hmm. on January 2016 on 12th. Mm -hmm. I had a class at 2, the following day on 13th, mm. at 2 p.m. So I my brother-in-law took me, I went to sleep, and then the following day he took me to school. Mm -hmm. I have to go to enroll all that process, mm -hmm. go to the international office, mm -hmm. you have to run here and there, and then you have to be in class. In class. Actually, remember my first class I got late with like um, almost 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I walk in the class, you know, I was going to do my master's. Mm -hmm. I was in a master's class. So is it master's of science in nursing? Yeah, master's of science in nursing, mm -hmm. education track. Mm -hmm. So you, it's where but you walk in class and you find people you're like, this is a new country, you, you know nothing, mm -hmm. you're just like a confused creature. Mm -hmm. You're like, anyway, I go to class and I just start. I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And then you find yourself, you are the only color student. Mm -hmm. As in, it's so, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I finished with that and then we went to my next class. Mm -hmm. I had three classes. The same day. The same the day. day. Yeah, because I, the classes were only on Thursdays. Mm -hmm. So I had classes one day in a week mm -hmm. on Thursdays, but the whole day. Okay. So I had a class at 2, mm -hmm. then from another one at 4, and then 9. So I went to my second class. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the second class was English. I'll never forget. Mm -hmm. It was communication skills. Mm -hmm. Then I go, and there was this professor who... Well, I say she terrorized me, not in a bad way, but she made me get out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Because, yes, in all growing up and in school, I, I can say in all where I was, I, always, I was always the best student in the class. Mm -hmm. But you would never see me raise my hand. As to answer questions. No. Mm -hmm. Whatever the teacher asks, I know, mm -hmm. but I can't raise my hand. Why? Because I was very shy. Mm -hmm. And I think I was always playing a low profile. I was so quiet. You will never notice me where I was. Mm -hmm. But actually people always recognize me when I'm called 
when when they are reading the top ten and they oh don't, who is that and then I would stand. Mm -hmm. So I was always on the lower profile. Mm -hmm. And now here comes you you in a foreign land mm -hmm. and you have to like introduce yourself. Okay. So she was yeah. Tell us who you are. I'm like, now I started saying, oh, my name is Dorcas. And I was very soft spoken. Mm -hmm. I think, and nowadays I tell myself, oh, man, and nowadays I talk too much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was so soft spoken. Mm -hmm. And then I, I say, she said, no, come on, be in voice. I'm like, who? I started crying. When I, <laughs> I broke. I'm like, mm. now I'm. Nervous, I can't talk. Mm -hmm. I started crying. I'm like, she's like, why? What is happening? Now the other student now they were so sympathetic mm -hmm. with me and they didn't know here they tell myself, sorry, sorry. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that passed, but she told me, You're here in US, mm -hmm. you have to speak. You're in master's class, you have to stand and talk. Mm -hmm. Big voice. I'm like, big voice, okay. Mm -hmm. So when I left the class that day. And my my in law came to pick me. Mm -hmm. I was crying in the car because I'm like, really? He's like, yeah. now you're crying. It's mm -hmm. just the first day. Are you going to survive? He's like, oh you man. Make it. I know mm -hmm. it's the first. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Is this is what I signed for? <laughs> ah, but I'm like, okay. It's okay. We're gonna work it through. So that finish, and then we start adapting and all that mm -hmm. but the challenge is now you have to make sure you pay your school fees and all that yeah. pay your school fees and everything you have to do your homework mm -hmm. and then another part i always say oh i wish i i know i was not so much computer literate mm -hmm. and that means computer packages where you finish your High school, high school, oh, computer yeah. packages, MSF. Yeah. Hmm. Now you come here, you have to do everything online. You have to type your papers, you have to do all that. Oh, it was really challenging. Yeah. Research and everything. Anyway, you maneuver. The other thing is you get this, the culture shock yeah. you get. Yeah. Because you, you knew, whatever you knew or whatever we do back home, you come here, everything is different. Mm -hmm. And especially if you're in school, the students, you can get, it's really rough. Yeah. But I would say when you come and you're determined, you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And you don't lose track, mm -hmm. then yeah. you will maneuver. Mm -hmm. So it was really hard, but I told myself, you know what? Mm -hmm. I have to do this. Then when you come, people will, you will find different people. They'll mm -hmm. discourage you, they'll tell you, Oh, you know, there are so many people who came here, mm -hmm. they never even finished school. Yeah. Uh you you are not going how are you going to do it? You may not make it. Mm -hmm. You find all sorts of advice. Yeah. But it will depend of what is your purpose. Mm -hmm. What is your why? Mm -hmm. That is the thing. So that one will drive you. So I've I always have three, three P's. I always call them the P's that drive me. The purpose. What's my purpose? Why am I doing this? Yeah. Then the other one is persistent. If you don't persist on doing what you want or working towards it, yeah. my friend, you won't do anything because you'll find all discouragement, you'll find all challenges, but your persistence will help you. Sure. Then the other one is perseverance. Everything you have to pay the price. Mm -hmm. But if you don't persevere, you don't have that tolerance, mm -hmm. then you will not achieve anything. The process, uh, I looked for a job. I remember that first semester. Mm -hmm. So I finished my classes on that day. Mm -hmm. Then on Monday, because that was on Thursday, mm -hmm. Friday I didn't go to school. I stayed at least because there was jet lag and I had assignments to do. So on Monday, I was like, <laughs> my brother told me, you know what, you have to go look for a job. How will you, how will you pay your school fees? Mm -hmm. Go look for a job in school. Mm -hmm. I went. He dropped me. It was winter. I didn't have a car or anything. Yeah. So I went to school. 
and then you I walked literally from one department to another and you know they are like different buildings mm -hmm. so I walked from one, one to another looking for a job you go knock to our office oh I'm a new student and I student do you have any work I didn't know most of the work you applied before. Mm -hmm. Most of this in that school, you apply like the previous um, semester at the end. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know that. So mo where you go, they said, oh, we already have, we've hired the student who had applied at the end of the semester. Mm -hmm. So I walked, I walked. But I went to one of these, uh, it was a school of theology. Mm -hmm. I went there, I told them, they told me, well, just give us your details. We don't know, but we'll let you know. Yeah. So I went. I didn't get it immediately. I stayed like for a month. Mm -hmm. Then they called me. Oh, Dr. are you still interested? So my first job literally was um, like a assistant. Mm -hmm. I was helping the, the, the head, vet, not Vespers, midweek prayers. Mm -hmm. So I was like a deacon, a deacon. In our church, you call it a deacon or a deaconess. Yeah. Someone Asha. who's Asha, yes. Mm -hmm. So my work was uh, before the prayers, mm -hmm. print the print the Program. programs, mm -hmm. go carry that big cross. <laughs> it was a Methodist. <laughs> it was a Methodist. So there is this big cross. Mm -hmm. You have to go and put it in the center. Yeah. Uh, uh, put on the candles, they had some candles, mm -hmm. and then make sure the wine and the bread. <laughs> I never knew that. Yeah, those were the things I did. And then now you stand at the door and welcome people and give them. So that was a job I got. Mm -hmm. So, and it used to be only on Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. So, that means it's just Wednesday you have yeah. to work. How much, how much were they paying you? To, be, to, to print the program and to send the cross. That was seven dollars. I was selling at seven dollars per hour. Mm -hmm. So anyway, but they was they are really they were really good because for that they used to pay like three hours. Mm -hmm. They would because anyway the service didn't last for three hours, mm -hmm. but okay. it was like three hours. Okay. So I started with that, mm -hmm. but I was like, man, this is what I got seven dollars. Good. Mm -hmm. So the next semester they were like, now can you help with, can you assist uh, teachers? They had uh, an online, no, not online, virtual class. Mm -hmm. So I would go, as, when the teachers are in class, mm -hmm. I would set the cameras and all that. So at least yeah. I started working more hours. Mm -hmm. That was like whenever there is a class. Mm -hmm. So I started working from nine to, to four. So nine to four, uh, Monday and not except Thursdays. So anyway, that one helped me. I was I could at least there is something coming and I could pay, even if it was still there. So anyway, I had to like find a way out. No, I looked for another. I had two jobs in school. I was started working with the international student office. So that one at least was more hours. But I used to work during the weeks. Anyway, while you're a student, you have always to know how to survive. Survive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the thing I can say, you have to be persistent mm -hmm. and perseverant. Yeah. Yeah. Because even if, as in, you have to do whatever it takes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then um, I I finished, I finished my masters in twenty seventeen. Actually, I went to school continuous, even the summer. Mm -hmm. So I finished within five semesters, I was done. Mm -hmm. So the good thing is when I, when I was working with international students, I started knowing how, how you can maneuver things around and what are the requirements in the international office and all that. Mm -hmm. So I finished, in the, by the time I finished, I applied for my OPT. That's like an internship, yeah. one year. So I'd apply for that, I got a job for one year and took a break for one year, that was 2017. Mm -hmm. And in the process, because I, I had my nursing uh, license from Kenya, mm -hmm. when I came here, there was, I realized that you, you can um, transfer or endorse your license mm -hmm. here and start working. 
you should get approved. So I started the, the process. It's a long one, mm -hmm. but I started it with the city finance and all that. I got approved. Now the challenge came, studying for the NCLEX. Mm -hmm. That was, well, it's, an, <laughs> it's really a challenge. Mm -hmm. I say that because I studied for it, mm -hmm. and for the first time in my life, I experienced failure. Because even in my high school and all that, as I said, I was always the best top on my school. So education was like, ah, I was a good person to study. Mm -hmm. So come study for NCLEX and the first thing is fail. It hit me because it's I've always been that nice. person who, who always feared. I can say I had fear of failure, but right now I've overcome this. Mm -hmm. But that one hit me really hard. Mm -hmm. I went into depression. I can't lie up because I was not expecting and then I was, you know, like the way you plan if I pass this NCLEX, I get my license. Yeah. Within that one year of OPT, I'm gonna look for an employer and then I change my status. You know, like you, you yeah. plan things mm -hmm. and you think they're gonna go the way. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. mm -hmm. I failed and that was in 2018, January. I was depressed. So I was like, what do I do? not planning because I thought by the time I'm done with the OPT, I'll be getting a job to change my status. Yeah. So I just stayed and I, I didn't share it with so many people because I, I'm always a laid back person. Mm -hmm. So I just stayed, very few friends knew, but I kept, I went back to study. I told myself, you know what, mm -hmm. this is the only way. I can change my status from a student mm -hmm. and maybe God willing get a green card. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm not giving up. Even if I'll do the exam 10 times, mm -hmm. I'll do it. Yeah. So I, I, I took a break for like four months, but I was studying. Mm -hmm. I booked the exa exam again. I never told anyone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I booked the exam the second time. Mm -hmm. I did it. I failed. I was, whoa, man, what is this happening? Now in that process, I stumbled into a book. It's called Fail Forward by John Max. Mm -hmm. Maxwell. Well, I like reading. I'm not so good at reading, reading, but I'm, good I'm a good listener. Mm -hmm. So I have these audio books I always listen to. Mm -hmm. So I listen to that Failing Forward. And I realized every, all these successful people, you hear their success. But most of them want to talk about their failures. It doesn't mean they did. Most of them failed a thousand times. But they didn't give up. You fail. You fail. You fail until you get it. Someone said failure is one st step to success. But it depends. Are you going to accept the failure? Or are you going to accept the defeat? If you accept the defeat, then you're done because you won't try it again. So I kept on doing, I told myself, you know what? <laughs> These people don't know who the key is. I'm going to do it. So if I fail after the like 45 days, you rebook. So, you know, I did the exam. At the end of it, I passed. So um, when I passed, I got my license. And that was in, actually I got my license in 2019, mm -hmm. but I had gone back to school because school. my OPT finished in July mm -hmm. 2018. Mm -hmm. I didn't want my status to go, like, start mm -hmm. running around <coughs> the government, so mm -hmm. I was like, what's next? <laughs> mm -hmm. I was not ready to do a PhD, mm -hmm. but what? Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it. If that's it, what? Mm -hmm. And then my dad told me, You'll be a doctor. Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to be a doctor of nursing. Mm -hmm. Let's go. I enrolled to my PhD program. Mm -hmm. So I went back to school. That was in August 2018. Mm -hmm. But as I, as I said, everything has a purpose. Yeah. God does his things in a miraculous way. Mm -hmm. We may complain. We may say whatever we say. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, God's will, is, will always happen. Sure. So I went back. Did my uh, enrolled for my first semester in my PhD program. Mm -hmm. 
remember by all that time I not I had not gone gone back home. Mm -hmm. So it was like that was the third year. Mm -hmm. And I had left my two boys with my husband back in Kenya. Mm -hmm. But something funny, whenever I talk to them, they are like, Mom, come pick us, come get us. Mm -hmm. We want to go to US. I'm like, oh, you guys don't know what you say. You know, like they're they small know. kids. They don't know what then I said, Oh well, we'll see, we'll see, I'll come. Mm -hmm. So I decided to go home in December, mm -hmm. no, November 2018. Mm -hmm. But before I went, I was like, because I've enrolled to a new program, mm -hmm. I have a new um, F, no, yeah, F1, F1 yeah. and I have a new I-20. I yeah. So I, I was still working at the Department of International Student. Mm -hmm. I told my boss, hey, I'm going home. Can you write me a recommendation letter? Uh, can you can I get the F2 mm -hmm. because uh, when you're a student yeah. you can get your family mm -hmm. if you have kids or your husband mm -hmm. using the F2 yeah. but when they come here you have to make sure you maintain your F2 F1 status mm -hmm. otherwise you're doing mm -hmm. everything for everybody so they gave me the F2s for my two boys and for my husband mm -hmm. so I went back to Kenya in November I went there and I booked the appointment. I booked first for my two, the two kids. Mm -hmm. When I used to, they used to tell others, "Oh, you are going to America with mom." We've not gone even to the embassy. I'm like, embassy. "Oh God, please! These children should not be disappointed." Mm -hmm. But I tell you, there is a power in belief. Mm -hmm. Those kids had a great faith that we parents were like, "Oh my goodness, what they don't know." <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So we went mm -hmm. and. God is good. Mm -hmm. They were given the visa. So I came back with them. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, I tell myself, I think if I had not gone back to school, mm -hmm. maybe I would not have managed to get my kids here. Sure. Because they would be still there. Maybe, mm -hmm. who knows? Mm -hmm. So when I, they came, I came, I did now the NCLEX. And the moment I came with them, I did the NCLEX, mm -hmm. I passed. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about coincidences. Yeah. So I passed, I got my job, uh, now I started looking for a job, I got a job, mm -hmm. but I, I got a job with an agency, mm -hmm. because most of the hospitals, they didn't want to file, yeah, to file for, to file for yeah, mm -hmm. to, for, for a green card, mm -hmm. but th there are some agencies that they, um, when, when you can't employ with them, they can file for you, change mm -hmm. of status. And some even do process, uh, if you're in Kenya, mm -hmm. there's some agencies that process for nurses mm -hmm. from Kenya and they bring them to US. Mm -hmm. I have some friends, mm -hmm. my classmates from Baraton, mm -hmm. who have come from Kenya to US through those agencies. Mm -hmm. And here, right now, actually today, I celebrate my one year of a green card. Mm -hmm. I got a green card last year on 27th January, so... Oh, that's good. Well, I don't know whether it's a coincidence or whatever happened. I don't know <laughs> the universe. <laughs> anyway, so uh, I filed with them. They are called Westways uh, Services. Mm -hmm. They filed. They f I they filed for me mm -hmm. and my kids. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, okay. So you have, but the thing is, you have to maintain your your status has to be standing. Mm -hmm. If you are an F one, you make sure you still maintain your status mm -hmm. until you get your papers. Because that way, they, there is not so much controversy when they go to file for you. Yeah. The government won't have much problems. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's a process that takes at most one year. Mm -hmm. So, um, and once you get it, now you're at least a permanent resident. Yeah. And you have all those privileges that you can get. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, what I can say... When you come here as a student, mm -hmm. you just have to know what brought you here. Mm -hmm. You have to be persistent. Mm -hmm. And then it's, it helps when you talk to others who came. And then you can know what people do, what helps them, how did they do it. Mm -hmm. That way, you might not waste so much time. Mm -hmm. uh, you might be able to at least know how to go about mm -hmm. faster than maybe having to experience the hard stuff, mm -hmm. yeah. Wow, so, and this is the reason why I wanted you to come to this show, because I know you have friends back home, even uh, I have friends who have done BSN back in Kenya, and maybe they want to come to this place as in the 
to come and practice nursing and uh, you've heard from her that there are agencies you can uh, try these agencies and then to, uh, you can come to this country and work as a nurse and then the other way you can of course apply for a master's program or whichever the course and come to this place and then go to school and even as you go to school then you can work your way out and maybe even as we finish maybe you can talk to the you can talk to even the international student in this country you know there's somebody maybe in some place and uh, he or she is on a verge of losing hope you feel like they feel like you know i cannot make it you know things are getting tough each and every day i mean we have experienced it mm -hmm. you know what it takes you sometimes you don't get time to sleep you don't you know you have you have to pay school fees mm -hmm. you have family back home you have to support them and for those people who have a family even here you have children to take to school so maybe you can share with us maybe a little bit about that experience and uh, talk to these people. Maybe somebody you somebody someplace they feel like, you know oh man I cannot make it. Maybe somebody has done you're booked for your NCLEX you failed and you feel oh man no this one I don't think I don't think this is the reason why I came to this country. Yeah. Yeah, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. But as I said, uh, you have to know your purpose. For me, I. I'm the first one in my family. Mm -hmm. I have two brothers back home and my mother, I take care of that. So I know that I have to do this mm -hmm. no matter what because they rely on me. Mm -hmm. And also, I want to be uh, to, to achieve my financial freedom. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be relying on people. Mm -hmm. I want to maybe let in life have the best life. Mm -hmm. So if I don't have good roots right now, yeah. Maybe it will be, it will of, de definitely will be hard later. Mm -hmm. So, I had to know. I Like, I would say, <laughs> for me, uh, I call myself a work holly. Mm -hmm. Not calling, but that's how I've been. Mm -hmm. I would work like two, two to three jobs. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm kind of slowing because also whatever age and maybe burnout is catching up with me. Mm -hmm. But you, I would work like three jobs, mm -hmm. go to school from the school, go to work somewhere else, maybe just help someone at home, you have a client at home, go see. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you have to, it's like a sacrifice. Yeah. I like, I always listen to these uh, books and motivation. Jim Rohn mm -hmm. is a motivational speaker. Mm -hmm. You always say, there are two, ki two kinds of pain. Mm -hmm. Pain of discipline, mm -hmm. which is just not too much, mm -hmm. or pain of failure. Mm -hmm. Which means if I don't discipline myself now mm -hmm. and persevere, not sleep maybe for those few hours, mm -hmm. or like pressure myself to work like two jobs to get an extra something maybe to save, invest, help someone, and just enjoy or lay back. Mm -hmm. Maybe I will never even have finished school. Yeah. I will never have gotten what I got. Mm -hmm. Maybe I, if I decided to help with NCLEX, mm -hmm. right now I will not be like a, a permanent resident mm -hmm. because you have to do it. You have to do something to, to achieve it. Yeah. But you have to be disciplined. Mm -hmm. And as I say, you have to be persistent mm -hmm. and perseverant. Yeah. At the end of the day, you get what you want. Yeah, so I would say it's all your mindset and working hard. Well, nowadays we say work smart, so yeah. <laughs> all of them. Sure. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming to this show. And I believe it's a story that is going to inspire so many people. In this life, for sure, if you don't know your purpose, as you've said, it's going to make your life difficult. And uh, myself, actually, I've experienced life in this place, and I can say that um, even for those people who want to come to this place, either whether you, you come through an agency, whether you come as an international student, or whichever the capacity that you might want to you get yourself in this place, you have to be prepared. It's not, it's not a better process. You have to spend sleepless night. You know, I remember myself some time back, I used to, I to change my, my clothes on the on parking lot so that I can go to class. Yeah, and the I'll first that like yeah, too. <laughs> and the first 15 minutes i couldn't see the, the professor you know and it was i don't know but uh this is what i can say it is uh, 
if you want to come to this place and the, actually to any foreign country or if you want to achieve anything in this life you have to put on work you have to be persistent you have to believe that you will you can make it so thank you so much for coming to our show and uh, i wish you the very best thank even you. as you continue i know you're planning some things and i know near future which is uh, i believe very soon we will be having you back to this show probably as a and uh, you will give us another another inspiring story so that is it for now and uh, i'll say if you haven't subscribed make sure that you hit that subscribe button and of course don't forget with the notification bell so that every time we post a video you will be the first one to know you don't want to miss these inspiring stories we want to learn together and become better people in the societies and in the communities where you come from and of course Tell us what you think about the video, go to the comment section, leave a comment there. If you have any question, especially those people who want to come to this country as an international student or whichever the capacity, those people who are nurses back home, it doesn't matter whether you're in Kenya or whichever the country in Africa, you can reach us, you can have a Facebook account, the name is Tony Mugomi, you can send me a, me a message and I will get back to you. And uh, don't forget also to like the video so that this message can get to many people. Otherwise for now, I'll say bye-bye and I'll see you in the next video.